mutual respect is very important in a relationship setting. Real relationships are not like that movie, The Princess Bride. There are going to be moments where you feel disrespected by your partner and as a result could lead to an argument. Something important to remember while in an argument with your partner is how you respond is your responsibility. Angela Deem, AKA the Dirty Bird, doesn't understand this simple concept and we can see that by how she has verbally, emotionally, and physically abused her husband, Michael, on 90 Day Fiance, Happily Ever After. <laughs> Trust I'm out! She's How about that? Your car apart. My car. Jinkies, who let the crackhead in the studio? Am I right? Welcome to the Your Wet World Tour. I'm in a hotel right now. You've got the light gleaming on me. I look really white. I'm not this white in person, I swear. TLC, our favorite company, literally hit us with the four-piece combo because the tell-all was in four parts. We made so many videos on Ed and Liz and covered their antics throughout the entire tell-all to the point where it became a little bit obsessive, I'll admit. However, this video is very special because it's episode one of our three-piece series on the Dirty Bird, AKA Angela Dean. Right away, some criticism for the producers from episode one of the tell-all to episode four, there was a lot of filler. For example, no one gives one f about what these creatures are doing before the tell-all. They kept saying things like 72 hours before the tell-all, they were doing this. 24 hours before the tell-all, they were doing this. The first half of the tell-all part one was spent covering what Angela and Big Ed are doing at home. Let me know what y'all think in the comments about this, but I just found it very unnecessary, especially that scene of Angela talking to her grandbabies and foreshadowing her going ballistic at the tell-all. He's got my confidence low. I, I'm really upset with him, but I gotta go see him. So if I gotta go see him, I need to look hot. Make him jealous. Yeah, boost me up, Ronnie. That's what I need. Maybe I'm strange because I care about the evolution of our species and I'm really looking forward to meeting aliens, but- Hello there. How are we supposed to join the Galactic Federation if we have these people holding us back? Do you know how much anxiety your Meemaw's having? I'm gonna be like emotionally up and down. Meemaw, tell us more about your messy relationship with Michael. Isn't this a wildly inappropriate conversation for a grandmother to be having with her grandchildren? Angela then picks out a tacky red dress to wear that flatters her apple build and then says goodbye to her grandchildren. So I don't know if Michael was a scammer, opportunist. All I know is he was a cheater, he was a liar, and he's up to something. And I got this feeling there's something more I need to hear from Michael that he ain't told me because he's been lying from day one. Lizard Mima is obviously projecting here because everything she just stated are also things that she did to Michael. You've cheated on Michael throughout your entire relationship with him, not to mention that you flirted with Billy throughout this entire season. This is a reoccurring thing with Michael and Angela's relationship. What usually happens is she can demean her man in any way, shape, or form, and she takes zero accountability. However, she shifts all the blame on him because he recently got caught cheating on her her and messaging another girl behind her back. They're just going to focus on that, but not going to focus on her doing the same thing to him and what led him to doing that, to be honest, to him cheating. Before we continue reviewing this cringe couple on this trash TV show, I'd like to tell you about today's video sponsor, Factor. Factor makes meeting your nutritional goals easier than ever by delivering fresh, never frozen, dietitian approved meals directly to your door. Factor offers keto, calorie smart, chef's choice, and vegan plus veggie options, which include seafood, meat, and plant-based meals. With Factor, you're going to be feeling like Jack Harlow because you got options. And the best part is there's no prep and no mess. Factor cuts out stressful meal planning and extensive prepping so meals come together in minutes. Quite literally taking the guesswork out of what to make for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Factor meals arrive prepared and ready to eat in just two minutes. That's even faster than takeout. Personal story time factor has helped me out immensely because I'm someone that gets lost in the grocery store and usually ends up buying an excess of ingredients that I don't end up using, which results in me creating a food monster in my fridge. Factor is so flexible I can easily adjust my order size, enjoy with loved ones, or skip a week if I decide to take a trip that week. With Factor, I'm able to schedule my meals ahead of time so that I can use my brain power on more important things like making videos for my Your White Sock community. If y'all are interested in getting started with Factor, head to factor75.com and use code YourWetSock50 for 50% off. Big thanks again to Factor for sponsoring today's video. Now let's get back to our featured program. He's sneaky because he wants to do her dirty like she's been doing him dirty. It's not at all the way you should go about it as a man. You should end that relationship and you should pursue a healthy relationship with someone. Cause you know we've been not getting along. I'm just a going cause I'm gonna raise holy, holy me all hell. How wild is this? She's bragging about the wrath of Meemaw. Like that's any way to conduct yourself as a woman 56 years of age to constantly yell and be confrontational with people. I'm confident that every girl I dated while living in Hawaii would stomp Angela out. She's only confident getting in people's faces while on camera because she knows that no one's going to stick her while they're filming. Next, she shows her fit to her daughter Skyla and admits that she's not looking forward to going to the tell-all. She's capping here for sure because every cast member I've talked to has told me that Angela is someone that really loves to be in the limelight and looks forward to being on the show. And 
And we can see that by how before 90 Day Fiance, she was on the Murray show. So she's someone that has always chased the spotlight. Because I call her and I say, I'm trading, I said, well, who's this? I never say. Lori. Shut your mouth. Oh, why, why are you? Listen, Lori, chill out. He thought I did what she was supposed to do. One minute I feel bad that he's treating me like this. And the next minute I feel mad and want to break his neck. It's so hypocritical of her to call Michael a scammer when she also used him to get on the show. She made this man financially reliant on her only to turn that into financial domination. She stopped giving him money so that he didn't have enough money to go out on his birthday or go out on the weekend, spend money and time with friends. She doesn't want him to go out, period. She wants him to just wait around and call her and talk to her and prioritize her needs, put her on a pedestal, yet she can flirt with any guy she sees. This is something very typical that I see with narcissists. They want you to be financially relying on them so that they can control you. Isn't it comical that when cheaters get cheated on, it's all of a sudden not fair. It's actually idiotic to demand and expect loyalty when you yourself aren't loyal. As we know, individuals who have narcissistic personality traits often lack empathy. Empathy is the ability to understand and relate to another person's emotional experiences. This is more than just not caring. They are incapable of feeling empathy for the other person because they are too focused on having their own needs being met. If you've been cheated on by a narcissist, this might actually help you. They are incapable of validating their own self worth, which is why they seek it from other people. The majority of narcissists constantly live in their ego, so they need someone to constantly reaffirm that they are special, they are different, they are unique, which is why Angela hates Michael in a way. She loves him and hates him because she doesn't feel like he gives her enough compliments. He gives her enough attention. A lot of things that she seeks from Michael are things that she should be giving herself, but she's incapable of doing that because there's a lot of childhood trauma that she hasn't healed. I understand it's hard to watch Angela because she seems like a very spiteful person, but from her fight language, it's very clear that her mother dated a lot of men that had terrible fight languages. I'm talking going from a zero to a hundred, screaming, yelling, cussing, saying demeaning things. A lot of times kids internalize what they see and will like repeat the same fight language. It's like Hansel and Gretel when they leave the breadcrumbs, you have to retrace your steps and really face yourself and understand where that comes from. Why you react the way you do. Why do you raise your voice? Why do you scream and yell? Why do you get violent? Why do you get in people's face? Once you figure out where that stems from and you forgive yourself, you make peace with it and you let it go, you're gonna feel so much happier. If there's a cycle that keeps repeating itself in every relationship you enter, a lot of times it's you. And if you're running away from the responsibility, you're never going to change or break the cycle. If anything, you're going to pick the wrong person, you're going to have children, you're gonna do to the children what was done onto you. And we can see that by how Liz is doing to her daughter what was done to her. Except for Liz's mother had a legitimate excuse, you know, taking care of her brother with special needs and prioritizing his needs over her. She should have paid attention to both children, obviously, but for Liz, what's her excuse? Entering this toxic relationship with Big Ed, prioritizing Ed's needs over her daughter? Not as much of an excuse, right? The problem with Liz is the same type of thing. She's recreating that childhood dynamic. Eight hours before the tell-all begins, we see Angela flirting with a man that appears to be an industry plant because I highly doubt any man would flirt back. Angela asks this stranger what he's doing tonight, which is wildly inappropriate given the fact that she's a married woman. Angela touches this man and says that she's too old for him. The guy responds, nah, I don't think so, and then adds that age is just a number. While this is happening, my inner self is screeching because it is appalling at the double standard in this relationship. Could you imagine if Michael did this and flirted with a girl? How do you expect to command respect and loyalty in a relationship when you yourself aren't respectful or loyal to your partner? This isn't a one-time occurrence. She does shit like this to Michael all the time. She'll go out with friends, she'll drink, she'll dance with random strangers. She literally throws herself at every man she sees and expects to be treated like a princess. <sighs> It's fucking haram is what it is. <laughs> Sorry about that outburst. I have a lot of Pakistani friends and they watch my videos. So I'm just trying to put on a show. Angela seems to be wildly intoxicated or on drugs. I haven't decided which one yet, but she can barely keep her eyes open while she's speaking with her friend in the elevator. She turns to her friend and says, Usman and Kimberly, and then begins to flex. She's already getting heated because I guess in the past she had a couple arguments with Usman because Usman is the only cast member that has actually called this woman out on her toxic behavior and treatment towards Michael. And you're going to be... Zan, look, look, look. and you're gonna pay. I ain't never skinned him, look. 
Well, you don't want to use it. I'm going to use it. No, you're not. Oh, you're wow, see. I don't know why Angela's huffing and puffing. It's like when Popeye eats the spinach and he gets all powerful. Usman's not even at the tell-all, so you can't physically harm him. All this liquid curd she's experiencing right now is going to go to waste unless she takes out all that fury that she has for Usman out on Kim and fades her right when she walks into the studio. Take no pride in being that guy, but a lot of us would be down for a 90-day fight club. Angela walks into the dressing room and says, watch this, and then starts dancing. So how she's going from being combative to dancing is just really funny to me. It just shows that she's on some good shit. One moment, I'm gonna beat everyone's ass. The next moment, woo -hoo -hoo. Hit it, hit it, get it, get it, uh, uh. Imagine this girl dancing on you at the club. My dick would be inverted. I turn into your wet pussy. Uslin is a liar, number one. He's puppet mastering. Kimberly. I agree with Angela. Ben had known that Usman was using Kim, the fan, to get back on the show 90 Day Fiance. It's not even debatable at this point. It's not just Kim either. I see a lot of women on the show putting their dudes on pedestals. If they're younger than them and good looking, my question to them is what value does this person add to your life? I feel like there's so many more important things than looks. Where looks fall should be like the sixth thing, but we care more about morals. We care more about ethics, honor, loyalty, trust. Like there are things that are more important. Personality is way up there. Like you have to actually talk to this motherfucker. Angela proceeds to make fun of Usman's height and make fun of him for being a short king. I Googled it and supposedly Usman's actually 5'11 and not 5'2. So I don't know why she's saying that he's short. She just seems to be in a talking smack mode right now. She actually goes on to say that her granddaughter would beat Usman's ass. And I just want to correct her. Like this dude would beat you and your granddaughter at the same time. <laughs> Five foot two, bitch. My 11 year old <laughs> slap <laughs> out of you. Get the <laughs> Out you here. definitely step on him, absolutely. But nah, my granddaughter step on him. What the it's like when someone asks you that question, how many third graders could you beat up? And it's just like, dog, infinite. Like I could pick up two third graders and use them as dual swords to hit the other ones with. Not saying I would do that. Don't take that clip out of context. I'm watching you. Day one of the tell-all, Angela pulls up to the function with attitude, saying things like, Usman's got the wrong bitch, man. As Angela's walking into the studio, she's already hyping herself up for this face-to-face -face confrontation with Usman. Angela then tries to phone her husband, Michael, but gets frustrated when he doesn't answer the phone right away. Already he's pissing me off for real. Early. Too early for right here. Too early. Angela, you're fully aware that your man lives in Nigeria. He's getting ready for the tell-all. I'm not sure what his Wi-Fi situation is or if he's actually going to a studio that they have in Nigeria because it seems like a spawning place for a lot of the people that go on the show and enter relationships. So I'm sure that TLC must have an office there. Point is, your man's getting ready for the tell-all. He shouldn't have to wait by the phone and answer your every call. You shouldn't get frustrated over something like this. My relationship right now is up in the air. I'm married to him and I've always protected Michael, but I'm not protecting him no more. How ironic is it for this woman to say that she's protected Michael, but she's done protecting him when we've seen her physically attack him on camera? She might want to look up the dictionary definition of what that word means. Were you protecting him when you threw a cake in his face or cussed him out? Like I said in past videos, if this is how she treats this man on camera, imagine how she treats him off camera. Why didn't you ask Michael? What? So either you're gonna be the lion son of a bitch or This is the problem with Michael, he just takes it. It's not our responsibility as the audience to defend him and fight his battles. It's his responsibility to stand up for himself. This is the problem with Michael. He allows this woman to demean him in any way, shape or form because his money is dependent on her. His green card is dependent on her. And instead of being a man setting up those healthy boundaries for himself, he would rather be a sneaky little rat and cheat on her behind her back. That's not the way to conduct yourself as a man. If you have a problem with somebody, you work it out face to face. Angela goes on to say, Michael, I got no problem with Kimberly as long as she doesn't speak up but if she does I'm gonna yell at her just like the rest of them. Angela then communicates to her husband Michael that if he doesn't stand up for her especially with Usman she's gonna freak out on him. Michael has a lot of cuck energy because whenever Angela speaks to him he is positively quivering in fear. Hi Sean how are you? you again. What's up Ed? How are you how doing? Are you doing? Crazy <laughs> how are you? <laughs> hey Liz nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. you bitch. You call me bitch wow. stupid ass. Oh shit, shots fired right away, y'all. That was like a duck duck goose situation, wasn't it? Hi, Sean. Hi, Ed. Fuck you, bitch. You can tell right away that Usman was not expecting this disrespect from Angela right off the bat, but he is very much about the action. Look who's here. That lion son of a bitch. This ain't gonna be good. I don't have nothing to do with this. I hope not, Kim, because I have nothing wrong with you. So keep it me is, out of it. It's not gonna be good, stupid ass. Shut the 
God. Here we go, y'all. The argument started well after the races. I respect Usman right away for standing up for himself and saying to Angela a lot of the same things that we would like to say to Angela. Kim, AK Stan, did not want any of that action. She took the coward's way out. He you, you're you. a beautiful woman. Stop. Let's well, stop. Get your teeth Can we please stop? Angela Deem, AK the Dirty Bird, talking about how Usman should get his teeth fixed. You cannot talk about how anyone looks. You look like a walking, talking ball sack head ass kid. You and Big Ed absolutely look like some kind of creatures that would be guarding a dungeon in Harry Potter. Angela. Angela, sit, sit. Angela, on. chill down and respect us, please. Yara, shut up. Oh, it is utter chaos, ladies and gentlemen. Angela storms off the set, and then Usman screams, Come and get your seat, pig. And I hollered. As Angela was walking off the set, she hit everyone with the fuck you, fuck them, good night. I do not, for the life of me, understand why Michael is so hellbent on moving to America and living with an emotionally unstable and unfaithful woman like this. If the math is mathing, this seems like a really easy way to get your neck broken in the middle of the woods in Georgia. The good news, y'all, is this is episode one of our three-piece combo on Angela, aka the Dirty Bird. I'm also making videos of Nine Day Fiance the other way, Milf Manor, Darcy and Stacy, and Thousand Pound Sisters. Be sure to look out for those. If y'all want some one-on-one -on -one time with me, please order a cameo. I'm actually the number one cameo creator in the entire world, so I'm even close. Super thankful for y'all watching my videos. Comment below, subscribe, let your friend, let your friend. Follow me on Twitch and Instagram right now.